Hey my friend, this is Joey back with another exciting video to educate you about the structures in Python. When an object is created, a special method known as the constructor is called, which can be used to initialize the data attributes. Now when an object is destroyed, then another special method is called, which is known as the destructor. You can imagine the destructor to be a twin of the constructor, but it is a savior as it frees up the memory by releasing resources that are tied to an object. I'll move to PyCharm now where I'll explain to you the destructors with the help of a few programs. So don't skip any part of this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then uh, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you won't miss out on any helpful videos I create. Let's first create a class employee. So we'll write class employee and a colon after. Within this class, we'll first create a constructor. How do we do that? Using the init method, for which we'll write def init. PyCharm has done it for me over here. Within this init method, I'll be assigning an argument ename to the data attribute name of the employee class. Let me also display a message when the constructor is called. So it will be print within double quotes constructor of the employee class called. This is the message that is going to appear on the console when the constructor is called. And after that, I am going to write self.name. This is our data attribute to which we are going to assign the argument in it. All right, I'm going to put this over here as an argument, which I didn't do earlier. This is our constructor. Now we'll create a destructor and remember, it will be called when the object is destroyed. To create a destructor in Python, we use the tell method with underscores in the beginning and in the end. Just like we have in it for constructor, we have tell for destructor. So let's create the destructor. So it will be def underscore underscore tell. Okay, PyCharm is helping me here too. Within this destructor, we'll print a message. So within double quotes of print, we are going to write employee class object destroyed in this destructor. Ensure that the spelling is right. Let's now create the main method in which we'll create an object of this employee class, which we'll then delete to check if the destructor indeed gets called. Let's do that. So it will be main. Then I'll name this employee class object as EMP. So it will be EMP followed by n equals to sign employee brackets. There you go. This line of code is going to create the EMP object for us. Technically, this EMP is a reference to the employee class object. Finally, we'll write the code to destroy the object for which we'll use the del keyword. So it will be del EMP. That's it. Now let's run this program and check the output. Okay, so program through an error. Why through an error? Because I didn't pass the ename while creating the object. So let me pass an ename. Let it be um, Joey. Okay. Let me run this program again. You can see when the object got created, the message inside the constructor got printed. And then when we deleted the object explicitly, the destructor got called and the message inside this destructor got printed. This line of code in which we deleted the object is not as often used in Python. Python has a garbage collector that takes care of memory management automatically. One of the tasks that the garbage collector does is clean up the memory when the program ends or when the object is no longer needed. It is like Java in which a garbage collector finds unused objects and deletes them to free up memory. Therefore, for what we can use these structures? If garbage collector takes care of cleaning up the memory, the answer is that you can clean up other resources attached to an object using these structures. 
when we create a connection to any external database for example or we open files to write or we open files to read all these resources can be cleaned up using destructors before destroying the object you have to remember though an important point that the destructor is called when either the program ends or all the references to the objects are deleted or when the reference count of the object is zero so in this program we deleted the object explicitly now let's check if the destructor is called when the program ends therefore all i'll do is comment out this line of code and we'll also add a last message to make it clear that the destructor is called only when the program is ended so within the double quotes of print we'll write this program ends now let's rerun this program and check what the output is there you go the destructor was called after this line was printed that means it was called when the program ended so i'm reiterating a destructor is called when all the references to an object are deleted and when the program ends just when i said when all the references to an object are deleted or the reference count of an object becomes zero what did i mean by that let's make a simple change to this program we have this reference object emp already let's create another reference emp underscore copy this will be the name of the new reference and we'll assign the emp reference to it like this now there are two references to our object of employee class mind that they point to the same object we can indeed check out the reference count using the sys module for which we'll import the sys module first and within print using the function get ref count we'll print the reference count so let's go to the top of the program over here let's import the sys module we'll do import sys that's it after the copy is created within print we'll write sys dot get ref count and as its argument we are going to pass emp underscore copy this is going to give the reference count of the object now we'll delete the emp reference so to do that we'll write del emp again now after deleting the emp reference we can check the reference count again and after that we'll print a message that reference emp has been deleted so we can write like print sys dot get ref count again we'll be checking the reference count using this reference emp underscore copy and after that we can write a message print emp reference has been deleted let's add a message over here as well to make it more clear so it will be reference count before emp got deleted curly brackets for the parameter then we'll make use of format and give this sys.getref count within its brackets let's add a message in this line of code too so it will be ref count after emp got delete curly brackets for the parameter then we'll make use of format again and within its brackets we will pass sys dot get ref count and as its argument we are already passing emp underscore copy the expectation is that the structure won't call after we delete this reference emp to the employee class object because there exists one more reference emp underscore copy and only when this gets deleted or the program ends the destructor will be called the reference count is not yet zero because after deleting the first reference which is emp this is what i mean by destructor getting called when all references to the object are deleted let's uh, run this program and check okay you can see that the destructor got called not when the emp reference got deleted 
but only when the program ended. In fact, to make it more clear, let me add one more line of code. So after this EMP reference gets deleted and after this message gets printed, let me write this code time dot sleep. That means the program is going to sleep for like five seconds. Okay, we'll have to import the time module as well. So I'll write over here import time. Let's rerun this program. All right. You can see that the program slept for like five seconds and only after that this program ends message got printed on the console and the destructor was called. The objective was that when this EMP reference gets deleted and since the reference count is not zero, that is why the destructor was not called. It was called only when the program ended before this EMP reference got deleted, the reference count is three. So it's one for EMP reference, two for EMP underscore copy. That means the second reference is EMP underscore copy. And the third reference is because it is being used in this function, get ref count. Then when it got deleted, when this EMP reference got deleted, the reference count changed to two one for emp underscore copy and another one because it is being used in this get ref count function so this is all i wanted to tell you on destructors in python i hope you enjoyed learning about destructors in python and uh, if you have any doubts then put them down in the comment section and i promise i'll answer them i look so much forward to helping you with python programming and only for this video goodbye and take very good care of yourself.